Made on Zencaster. Welcome to Zero to Hero Podcast. This is Billy, and this is going to be our first official podcast. And I am one, one and the only Jim, my brother. Oh, Lord, has this been a hell of a ride. You going to throw me into the bus like that? Just to, okay. That's, That's got to be a, a big bus to get you under. Well, it's like the double decker buses in England. They don't go very right. fast, but eventually they'll just take me out. Eventually. Right, right. Well, as this is the first episode of Zero to Hero, kind of want to dig into uh, what I've always grew up with, what I've loved, what basically we all have come to and seen and what stuck with us. I do want to get into anything from, you know, Gundam series, uh, Power Rangers, Dragon Ball Z, some animes. Uh, we kind of want to expand out from there. Maybe have people talk to us, share their opinions, what it meant to them, and, you know, kind of want to expand and see what the new generation thinks to compared to what the old generation thinks. And share our experiences from now till then. And see a common interest from the younger generation to the older generation. See what, see what divides us, what brings us together. Is it the franchises in general, or is it c- certain seasons that maybe we didn't see as kids, but the kids are seeing now? Do we have the same opinions? Do we like the same things? Kind of want to branch off of there. Hear people's opinions. Uh, bring in other people on the podcast to, to, to share different points of views and and what 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 like they like to see compared to you know maybe what somebody else might. Well, today's episode we have the owner of Headset Radio, the one that produces this show and helps me with everything. My younger brother Jim, he is the one that got me into this and a whole new scene for me as well. And what do you think, Jim? Well, you know. Thanks for letting me be here on your initial episode. This is going to be an uh, interesting show to work for and work on. And, yeah, no, man, like, we grew up together, and we were, we were, like, we grew up together, and we, we both liked Power Rangers growing up. And we both, I, I was the one who was kind of into anime and branched off of that and introduced you to that later in life. Because I remember, you know, growing up with you, you were very against it. <laughs> Like, no, 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 that's cartoons. I don't want to watch it. And now, as an adult, it's more uh, fun? Because there's better yeah. stuff out there. Like, yeah, you know, it, the stories are so much better. Yeah, there's only so many TV shows you can watch, but then if you look at, like, animation, they it just branches way off into whole different directions. Like, uh, I'm right now yeah. I'm watching a, a show called To Your Eternity. Oh, it's amazing, and it's a great right. story. And oh wow! I have never seen something like that with a TV show, but the storyline itself on as an anime is fantastic. I think with all these new streaming services now, uh, I you know the the Netflix originals, the Disney originals. Uh, I just finished what Loki and on Disney Plus, and it's just completely branched out the whole Marvel area. Oh man, the the whole streaming service and how they've they've, they've made stuff that's not ad produced. Oh, it's amazing! Like look at a uh, look look at He Man, the new He Man series on Netflix. That was oh wow uh, yeah yeah that was pretty good. Uh, it wasn't amazing, but it was pretty solid. And it wasn't trying to sell toys; it was trying to sell a story. Which I was like, what? That's amazing. Yeah, I'm not really into the whole He-Man thing, but I mean, their toy sales have just skyrocketed from what I've seen. They're, cl- they're, sh- they're clearing shelves at Walmart and Target. Oh, yeah, and like, look at uh, look at Star Wars. Oh, man. With oh, yeah. Plus. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Star Wars has been around forever, and I think they just reintroduced it to a younger generation with these newer movies. Yeah, with like the Mandalorian, um, 
Oh, Star yes. Trek, Star Wars 6, 7, uh, 7, 8, 9. That yes. They, it's a different story than what we grew up with, with, you know, 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. Wait, okay. for us, it was 4, 5, 6, right? No, we were we were the generation of 1, 2, and 3. Oh, that's right, that's yeah, right. We, yeah, we had Darth Maul. We thought Darth Maul was yeah. really cool. Hey, Whoa. give or take, Darth Maul is the only person to kill Liam Neeson on a movie. Yeah, the wolf didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got back up after that one. Man. But, uh, like, so, when we were kids, what was the one thing, like, I know that we grew up, like, not really... You know, with TV services or anything like that. We just basically had rabbit ears on a TV. Uh, I mean, besides the whole Power Rangers thing, what was the one thing that we, we kind of, like, got into? And, uh, I mean, the thing I remember watching was, you know, introducing us to the whole animation was, I think, Dragon Ball Z. Oh, okay. I think it was your friend at one point. They let us watch... Uh... They let us watch something. I think it was Dragon Ball Z. And then right. we, we were around, when we started getting cable again, this is on Cartoon Network, we were around during the very, very end of the Dragon Ball Z series with Cell, the Cell Saga. Yeah, the, the Cell games, Ooh, and, uh, and Frieza. Then, yeah, Frieza was a good series, like, good good chunk. Oh, man. And then uh, we watched GT, like, we got a little bit of GT, but we never really got into it. No, uh, yeah. I remember we went to our football coach's house uh, for practice. Before practice, mom would drop us off there, and we right. would watch like twenty minutes of GT before we had to run off to practice. Yeah. I think we were more into the whole Power Rangers scene because it just connected to us much more. Well, we were we were in the Power Rangers like when it first started. We were watching. Yeah. Well, I have recollection of watching seasons two and three. Like I, right. I, I was too young to remember season one, but I went back and rewatched like some bits and pieces of it. This when it came out, like when it came out, I was barely a few years old, you, and I just don't have recollection of it. But I remember, yeah, you, yeah, I remember season two and three. Yeah, yeah, you were like what two years old or something. I still remember watching the first airing of it. Yeah. Like I had to watch Green with Evil. Uh. I had to watch it later in life because I never saw it like when it first aired, but I knew always knew it was really cool. Tommy was always cool. Oh yeah, yeah. How he just manhandled all of them and then oh, became man. a part of them. He <laughs> broke into the Megazord and just beat up every one of them. Megazord. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. He's he's got that going on. Oh wow. Uh, what what was I um so like I know when we were when we were growing up. What was it? I think, you know, it was like a mix between Power Rangers, like Beetleborgs. Uh, oh, the whole Saban I know, era? Yeah. Yeah, the whole Saban. I mean, what was the other one that we watched? It was the um, the Knights of Templar or something like that. Oh, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. I got this. I got this. Hold uh, on. I remember the name. Uh, Tempara or something? Mystic, Mystic Knights of... Oh, it's the Irish name. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bon Vestic Knights of Tyrannog. Oh, man. Yeah, I remember growing up with that, too. And there was supposed to be a second season of that. It was, uh... There was, they were looking at making a second season, but, uh... They yeah, dead. I, I think they got cut after season one. Yeah, I remember the Gold Ranger, or the sixth, fifth knight at that point was a brown ranger. Yeah, I remember that. that. Was brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. And I was like, that was really cool. His, his weapon was an axe. <laughs> He had two battle axes oh, wow. with little small hatchet axes. And I thought oh, that was wow. the coolest thing. Yeah, like, I think that was, like, we thought that was cool, but I, you know what show that I thought was way much better, and it was an animation, was uh, Ronin Warriors. Ronin Warriors. Oh, man, that was... That was... That was cool. That was I the, I think... Warriors. That was the bee's knees back then for us. The Power Rangers, Ronin Warriors, and Gundam. Were like the three that we pretty much watched all the time. Okay, I watched Sailor Moon too because you know I like the anime. <laughs> I oh, watched don't that even. Whenever I got a chance to watch that because I, don't know, I, I liked anime as a kid. Like it, it was cool. Like it was a cartoon and it was violent. You're right. Oh yeah, that's true. And it had a dark side. Well, it yeah, was, it, it had, had a it, it, well, you know the uh, 
the dubbing for Sailor Moon was kind of questionable, but it was different. Oh. I liked watching it. It was different than I was used to watching. Yeah. Oh, right. Heck, well, most of the stuff we watched when uh, we were home uh, because, you know, our mom and uh, we didn't like any of the extra, like, late night stuff, or anything, so, but, like, the, the end of the day stuff. So we watched uh, the news. The news. Oh, yeah. The news. Yeah, more news. The ER. The news. <laughs> <laughs> World <Nightline>. news. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. my God! Twenty so twenty. Oh man. <laughs> like we didn't. We didn't get into the Simpsons. We didn't get the Family Guy. We we watched Rugrats and King of the Hill too. That was about it. Oh so, my God! Yeah, King of the Hill. But, but yeah. yeah, like our our shows. Like as growing up, was Power Rangers. Gundam because Gundam Wing was really cool. Uh, we we didn't get yeah. to watch it very often, but it was. Awesome, and um, Ronan Warriors was really cool, and I, I remember watching all three of those. They were just really cool as a kid, and it kind of got us into animation, and it kind of got us into the uh, the Sentai's and stuff like that. Like, I remember watching uh, uh, Giant Robots, the Big O. Oh, the Big O. Was oh cool. man, that was actually a really good one. The yeah. steampunk robot. Oh, yeah. that was. Dude, Toonami was amazing. Toonami did a great job hooking right. everyone up. And I remember watching Escaflone. Oh, man. Hold on. Oh, you're right. just you're naming some things I haven't seen in forever. Blast of the past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Escaflone was... Oh, my God. Yeah. They had that orchestral band, too. Oh, yeah. God. And then, what was another one that we used? To, uh, Evangelion or something? Evangelion? Oh, man. Evangelion. I remember that took... My like I they, they did that one one airing the first three episodes of Even Alien on Toonami and it blew oh my the train damn mind yeah we uh, that was really good I mean I never really watched it past I think season one but oh yeah there was I like, mean there was twenty six episodes and two movies and now there's three more movies that kind of do a retelling of the first season oh but, my god uh, what if what have I been doing with my life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's bananas. Tell you, on those four movies now, the fourth one just came out, and it's all um, it's all a little crazy. It's just oh wow, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you know what anime that really messed me up? Like, uh, as in like uh, the, the the detail of it and the whole storyline. Which one? Uh, what was it called? Um, with the the bikes and stuff. The bike, Akira. Akira, all uh, right, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Akira, Akira uh, that one messed me Akira, up because that was some. Akira. Yeah, that Akira. one, that one, oh man, that oh, that was so. I remember that one because okay, I remember as a kid, I always liked the backgrounds. Okay, yeah. so oh, yeah. I remember watching the movie and all the back backgrounds of the movie, like okay, so like all the uh, buildings and then the backscaping behind the buildings, like. Right. With the overshots and stuff like that. That was all hand-drawn. Everything was hand-drawn. Everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. They did the whole backdrop in every yeah. scene. I think I liked it the most because the animation was completely different from what I've seen. Up to that point, we were watching... Uh, SpongeBob wasn't out yet, but uh, we were watching, like, Camp Hill. Uh, we were watching... Yeah. We, we were watching American Animation at that point in time, and uh, Cat Dog was out, and... Um, oh, things. the whole Nickelodeon era. Nickelodeon yeah. era. And uh, we just, we never experienced anything like that. Oh, man. And your buddy Les borrowed the DVD, and it was just, oh, it was, <laughs> it was an awakening. That's right. <laughs> oh, really man. To say the least, because it was so different than what we were used to. And it blew both of our minds, because it was just, it was just so cool. Right. And so the, for the... For for that time period, that was like peaking for us. Oh yeah, man. Uh, then we went to we went to Blockbuster. I <laughs> went to Blockbuster. Oh my and god! We yeah. Looking, I, I looked for anime at Blockbuster because I, I figured out what it was called. I was like, oh, it's called anime. Okay. And so I was looking for anime at Blockbuster, and we couldn't find a dang thing. Oh wait, yeah, that's oh. right. That was. Jeez, Blockbuster. <laughs> oh, my God. The only thing I found there was Appleseed, and that was it. I never watched Appleseed. <laughs> I don't blame <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh I'm my like, god. Oh, you're good. You don't need this. And I'm like, well, what, 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 what do I need? And we just rent terrible movies. Oh, uh, I remember <laughs> when uh, we got Netflix. When we finally got Netflix, the back in the day when they did DVD delivery service. <laughs> yep, I remember that. Oh uh, yeah. I got. I ordered a butt a butt ton of anime, and I watched through. <laughs> Like that's I remember that. Watched, too. Uh, remember, remember we watched uh, uh, Candidates or Goddess like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That was a... Man, that was back... Because I remember that was... We would have to wait forever and ever to just get a, a CD in. Uh, sometimes the CDs are, like, broken. Yeah, they were always, Scratched. like, broken or something. Uh, yeah. That, that's how I watched Even Gillian. Like, that's how I actually watched all of Even Gillian and the movies. And that was a mind trip. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Like, that, that yeah. was, uh... So, you were saying that, you know, like, Gundam, to you, uh, I guess, like, the Gundam w- uh, Wing series, Endless Waltz, was, like, your favorite yeah. series? Yeah, we, or... we started with, uh, you and I both started with Gundam Wing, because I remember us watching that. Right. And that, that was what kicked off our entire fascination with giant robots. And, yes. And there wasn't, a. Uh, like, it wasn't really... But Power just started us on the giant robots. Right, right. But well, the Wing kind of pushed the envelope a little bit, and we weren't... Like, it kind of got us into the mechas. Like, we were like, oh, cool, mechas. Oh, yeah. And that was... That was... They kind of got us started in the anime, like, a little bit. It kind of got us started, but, like, Akira nudged us a little further and got us right. oh, a yeah. more. But uh, it was on. We were watching it. And uh, Gundam Wing, yeah, Gundam Wing was a really cool series for us to start with because it has some iconic moments. It has some, like when they uh, destroyed the the satellite base with uh, Toggies. Oh, oh man. man, yeah, yeah. And then uh, the fight between Death Sight, uh, Death Sight, and uh, Toggies. <laughs> Toggies was a really cool Gundam. It was yeah. an old model Gundam that kind of got recommissioned. Um, yeah. And I also was, I read, mm-hmm. I just, I read about the tall geese that um the the one that you see is basically the version three, and version one and version two actually became a part of the uh the other ones like um Death Scythe was I think version two frame, and it, and so, they yeah. they yeah and they they actually built like you know uh, I think I don't know if Sandrock was a part of one but I know Death Scythe. And another one, Heavy Arms, were both uh, uh, Tall Geese, I think, Frame 2s. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. I uh, I read about that, and I was like, this is, uh, that's that's actually pretty interesting to find out, that, that, that they base it off the Tall Geese. Oh, man, the Tall Geese in that series was just... Oh, complete, like, badassery. Like, as an old Gundam like that, as an old Frame, like, an old, old series Gundam... It was really it. It did very well. And, uh, oh yeah, it held up on its own. Out, and then uh, the Wing Zero. So like you had yeah you had, uh, the original like Gundam. What was the original one called? Because Wing Zero was with the Zero system. So it was like oh, it was Wing Gundam, Wing Gundam. Yeah. And then Wing Zero came out with the Zero system, which was kind of the only one he could pilot was Hero. Uh, the only one he could pilot successfully was Hero, and then. Uh, uh, Shars piloted for a little bit, but it kind of drove him a little batty. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's when he got the Epion Gundam, and then he switched back to Tall Geese after that after a while, if I remember correctly. A right. Bonkers. But, is, you know. is, like, is that your, like, favorite season, or do you, like, for me personally, my all-time favorite season right now, until I finish, like, a couple other ones, but, like, so far, Blood Orphans is, like, my, my favorite Blood Orphans is still on my to-watch list, plain and simple. Okay. Uh, the Blood Orphans is actually pretty cool because it, it shows that, you know, even though you have a machine that's 300 years old. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, actually, yeah, it, it says that... Like, uh, plants and stuff like that, too? Yeah, and an organic device system, you know, in a... Wow. It's pretty cool to, to, to hear these, and I didn't realize that the, the Barbatos... Um, Gundam actually has five or six different forms. Oh yeah. I I just knew that there was only two two different ones. Ah, oh, that's a pretty interesting. I didn't know that. Okay, so my 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 two favorite ones is still uh, Stardust Memory, which is Bubble Suit Gundam Zero Double Zero Eighty Three, 
Okay. And Double yes. Zero 80, which is War in the Pocket. Those both are really good series. Oh, wow. And they you, had you, some. Mm-hmm. You, didn't, you didn't like the uh, Double O? Uh, the Double O series is great. Like, it's it's a great series, but the ending's kind of... Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. But it, it's a great series. So don't get me wrong. Double O is fantastic. Iron Blood Orphans, I've heard amazing things about. Unicorn's really good. Oh, but Unicorn actually is... Kinda... Yeah. What? Yeah. Unicorn the, you, is... you, they got that psycho frame on that one. That one's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Like, I've, I've, like uh, yeah, Unicorn was really good. But, I don't know, just those two stuck with me. Like, they still stick with me, like, as an adult. Like, I, I still have very good memories of both those series. And right. And it, it just, it's good. And it hit hard. And there was, it was really good emotional stories. Like, it was more stories with the pilot than anything else. Or the, the team behind the pilot. Right. Like, uh, yeah, like, uh, the, the easy 80, 80 Gundam. Like, the, the mm, I want to say the, the Scrap Gundam. Like the one that was made out of scrap. Oh, right. That one, it was just brutal. And, like, how the pilot lost his arm and the, the blue Zaku... That, that just went down and, like, stabbed the uh, the cannon gun them. Oh, no, oh like, yes. The, the cannon suit just hit it, and, like, like yeah. the, the oil came out. Like, blood. oh, man, that was... Oh, did you me. know that that was actually the first female uh, pilot death on TV? Really? Yeah, because they actually... I think they both killed each other in that process, but that was the, the one that was actually in that mobile suit, not the Zaku, but the other one. Was actually oh, yeah. a female pilot. What I yeah, I learned something new today. All right, fair enough. Yeah, I uh, I, I research a lot of these things that work, and um, they're pretty interesting to see. Like, uh, what's another one? Uh, so, if you ever look at Gundam series in a general sense, mm-hmm. um, that the uh, Gundam suits have actually been um, like uh, terrorist groups, or they've been insurrecting violence. Now, there's only one series, only one series in the whole Gundam se- um, right now, in the Gundam universe, mm-hmm. where where the pilot has fought for something good and to help save people, like, uh, as in, like, a j- just like a good sense, and it was um, Gundam, G Gundam. Oh, yeah, G Gundam, yeah. Yeah. They were fighting so, the tournament and stuff? Yeah, so that, was, that series, G Gundam, is actually the only series where the pilot is uh, actually trying to help the world or, or like, a good guy sense instead of being, a, like, a terroristic group and stuff. Well, yeah, because you had Celestial Being, you had uh, Gun the Wing, they were a bunch of terrorists. Yeah, exactly. Like, Double O, Double O, um, well, yeah, you know, with Exia. Yeah, yeah Exia mm-hmm. and stuff. That was a terroristic group kind of thing. Uh, um, well, yeah, because... Yeah, because all the all the stuff is it's it's a political move for a lot of things it's, too. Like uh, that's, look at a double zero war in a pocket. Like that's that's its own yeah. little that's its own little thing. Yeah, and that and, was another uh, thing that they were talking about was it was all political. That G Gundam was never political. It was just more of a tournament. Turned out to be his brother was hiding a, a suit and on the planet as well. Yeah, <laughs> the, the suit that can you know replicate itself and destroy the whole world. Well, oh, it yes. was it was yes. designed to uh, terraform. It was a terraformer. Yes, yeah, and, and it would uh, it would basically like what take over different suits as well and people too. It would uh, it can control their minds. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it could, it could uh, it, uh, essentially. So, uh, if I remember right, the guy who piloted the shining Gundam, burning Gundam, his brother got sucked up into the devil Gundam. And it didn't take yeah. over his mind, but it used his body as... Essentially, it just made his body a part of the Gundam. Like, it needed yeah, a pilot, and so it made the body into a pilot. And the mind was just there. And, um, yeah. yeah, because he came back as a competitor, as, like, a robot competitor. Like, he was a robot. Like, spoiler alert. He was a robot. Nah, <laughs> you that, ruined it. Yeah, he had that <laughs> green and orange mask on, I think. Yeah, he had a green and orange And he stood oh, there on a he... leaf on the water. <laughs> So he was the one that was um, in the Shadow Gundam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of the Shadow Gundam, but he wasn't actually like it was like a um, extra bit. He was Neo Germany. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Neo Germany. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I remember that bit. 
and that was that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, Gene yeah. was a great series. It was it was fun, and then uh, wasn't uh, G Gundam uh, uh, one of the one of the seasons that they had to alter the names uh, from uh, the Japanese or the Sentai version to the American version because they had like. Uh, like Devil Gundam and God Gundam, they didn't want to yeah, tie yeah, in. They, yeah, they, they they made God Gundam into I think Shining Gundam or yeah. like Burning Gundam. Same thing with Des- Death Scythe. Gundam. Yeah, oh, same okay. thing with like Death Scythe Hell. They had to repackage and rename everything, just have Death Scythe. Yeah, Death Scythe H or something like that. Instead, yeah, H. Yeah, yeah. H. That's pretty interesting that the that the United States would do something like that. I mean, but you got kids watching it, so you know it's a it can easily translate to something else for them. Yeah, it's also kind of with the uh, the United States is a Christian conservative esque place, and some people forget right. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, I remember the you know, they the word race, hell. Yeah, yeah, raise so many concerns. The program. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, don't do, don't buy the hell Gundam, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then uh, we also had the whole D and D like craze, Satanic Panic in the eighties. Yeah. Oh Jesus! I remember that whole ordeal when we used to work over what in Bass Shop. Yeah, they he oh, would tell me y- your brother's playing magic. <laughs> He's gonna go to hell. <laughs> that was uh, that was dumb. Oh, yeah, I played magic for a while. Yeah, that was fun. A lot of money wasted. Not really wasted. It's a lot. It's a great game to play. <laughs> oh, very. Play it for fun. Don't play it. Don't play it for. Uh, don't play it competitively. Play it for fun. You'll right. More fun. So now that we've basically talked about the whole Gundam series and uh, what we liked about it, uh, basically what we liked about giant robots fighting. Um, another thing that has fought that giant robots was our childhood, basically. What we grew up watching was the Power Rangers they, with these Zord combinations. And, uh, you know, I'd like to visit on that because that's what we grew up on. That's what we watched. And it was pretty consistent uh, on the TV for us. And, you know, like, do you do you like how the Power Rangers have evolved from, you know, 93 till now? Do you like the direction they went, the people they casted? Like, do you like the storylines, uh of the different seasons, I think season one, two, and three were probably like the best ones of our childhood. Cause that was basically what we watched all, all the time. That and Zeo and, and Turbo. Like I, I went back and rewatched season one, but uh, season two and three really got me going. Like that, that caught my attention. Come on. The white Ranger. Yes. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. And then Adam was a black Ranger and the storylines from there were you know, they were, they were kind of cheesy, but, you know, I was a kid. We were both kids, and we loved it. Yeah. We ate it up like crazy. Right. And I remember, uh, I remember a couple, like, I remember Cat, the the Pink Ranger Cat, who took over for Kimberly. And yes. And Adam, Rocky, and Isha took over Trini, uh, Trini, Jason, and Zach. And I, I remember the, the, the power changeover. I remember the Mask Rider. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, the the whole series evolved as it went along. Because I remember, uh, because I remember getting to Zio. Because I remember that was the first time they did a suit change. Like, an actual suit change. Yeah, yeah. That was the first time in, what, four seasons that they actually had a suit change. Yeah, well, if you yeah. count the metallic suits. Oh, metallic that suits. did. Oh, God, what a horrible Glitter. suit design. <laughs> and then the Ninjetti the suits. Uh, but... We went to go see the movie when it came out. We we went to go watch that movie on opening day. <laughs> we right, were, I remember that. We were stuck to that stuff like <laughs> glue. It was great. And, and yeah, no, we, 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 we played with all the uh, we played with toys. We didn't have the Megazords, but we had all the toy like all the some of the other toys and you Right. Know, yeah. And the storylines were there. They you know, they evolved to they they evolved to be kinda cheesy and then got the season four or season yeah season four with Zio and then the storyline kind of took a different turn because you know it, it had new powers and they they had to grow oh I thought the Zio powers are the coolest powers like because they were exponential like they could always keep growing yeah I just thought uh, that was the coolest thing. A, a fan theory was that the Zio powers they had to change the turbo because the Zio powers were slowly killing them 
Oh, I remember that theory. Yeah, because Jason yeah. had uh, Gold Ranger power, and he it was slowly killing him because it wasn't built for his body. Like he wasn't. It was built for someone on Triforia. And yeah, yeah, that, yeah. The, the power of three, they could handle it because there was three of three of them, which you know, Jason was only one person. Yeah, and he was a ranger before, and uh, so I heard some theories since he never actually lost the like Red Ranger power. Like it was conflicting, uh, conflicting powers in him. That was the fan theory. And that was that was kind of fun. But, uh, oh wow! Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, and uh, Jay. Well, yeah. So Jason, yeah, Jason, and then the rest of them. They had to give the powers to Turbo, which we all know was actually for toy cells. But man, yeah, like it was so cool because you know they, they had power that was exponential. And then in the comics, if you haven't read the comics yet, there's a really cool thing about a Zeo crystal. And uh, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but it's really, really cool. <laughs> oh wow! Mind about the Zeo crystals. Um, but um, yeah, like, and then they got the Turbo, and Turbo was a little wonky. Like, yeah, it wasn't a bad. little. It, it was fun. It, it was. Know. It was. I think it was pretty good until they introduced Justin as the kid ranger. Like, don't get me wrong; they were trying to appeal to a younger audience, but I yeah. think that was just kind of a little, you know, a little too far. Yeah, it, Justin was okay. Like, I, I will say one thing: like going back as an adult rewatching Turbo, you'll notice that Justin's the most. Uh, adjusted person to be a ranger like he's the one who goes for the morpher first he's always the one like, yeah you know we have to use our powers now before this escalates out of hand yeah he yeah always, he's you know he was always on like, he was always on point but i know he, he was written like that to be on point so he was more intriguing of a character yes but, uh, yeah yeah like foster he was a kid man like i'm not gonna be like oh he's a terrible actor uh, it was okay he was all right for like, for a boat I loved him coming back in space. Oh, uh, he was actually, it was a fun little, like, it was a fun thing. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I also think cool. TJ was a really good Red Ranger. TJ was fantastic. Yeah, he and was pretty good. He was a great Ranger to begin with. Like, he, he knew nah. when to step down for the leadership role. He knew when to step down and let someone else have the leadership role because he knew, like, it wasn't his ship. <laughs> like, it yeah. wasn't his ship. He wasn't going to fight Andros for the, like, Red Ranger power. He's like, I know. No. I know you know what you're doing, and you you take you know you take lead on this. I'll be your backup. I'll be your second command. Yeah. Now, uh, now there's a thing going around saying that the Lightning Collection they're actually going to make a, it TJ as the in uh, the Turbo Ranger Lightning Collection toy, not not Tommy. I'm okay with that because there's been yeah. how many Tommies? One, two, there's three, so four, many. Five, five Tommies so far. Like yeah. Dragon, We're, White Ranger. Green Ranger, Evil, Green Ranger, Putty, and Zeo. Yeah, five. Yeah. Did five Tommies. And then we're supposed okay. to get a a, a Jetty uh, Tommy too, and then a, a Black uh, Dino Thunder Tommy. Jeez, yeah, they're just, just milking, milking that guy. <laughs> like, I know he was the favorite Ranger in the '90s. Like everyone loved him. Everyone loved him. But there's too much Tommy, man. They calm down. There's, there was other Rangers <laughs> who were far more interesting. Like, don't get me wrong. We're, Tommy we're getting had some, a lot of, yeah. Some straight up Tommy overload, that's what that is. Right, yeah, I mean, Tommy, like, Jason did yeah. only, like, he, he's only so popular. Like, don't get me wrong, the Lord Draken thing was really cool. Like, that was a yeah. really cool storyline, a really, Shattered Grey was a great arc. Oh, in the comics. very. Shattered Grey right. was a really great, great one too, but, yeah, but, you, you know, Joe. I can I can live without any more Tommies coming out for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I can like, give it a couple like give it a couple waves before you run out, Tommy. Yeah. please Just give us a minute. <laughs> oh, uh, and then I see I see that a lot of people that will get his signature and then try and sell his uh the the item that he sold for a lot of money. But what people don't realize is that you know. You know, Jason everybody David Frank. Got his signature. Yeah, every everybody like you got. He probably you know does about ten thousand signatures a year. It, the 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 market's flooded with his signature, so there's no value. Yeah, like uh, there's a apparently at some point fairly soon there's going to be a convention where the Lost Galaxy Blue Range is coming out, and he's he's going to do signatures and stuff on his Lightning Collection toy. Oh, and that's I, cool. Like, oh, cool because he doesn't. The dude never. He, he barely ever does any conventions because he has his own thing doing his own thing. Right. And, uh, like, look at the uh, the Red Ranger for Time Force. He, well, the West from Time Force, that guy, he's a lawyer. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> he never gets that one about. <laughs> oh, he wow. Actually, okay. So his, his law office, apparently the uh, what I've heard is in his law office, he actually has the the Time Force Red Ranger helmet on his shelf in his law office. And I'm like, yes. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> like, kudos yeah. to you, buddy. Kudos to you. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the one thing I do like about uh, the Rangers, or the Power Rangers franchise, is most of all the actors are just they have a lot of fun doing the series and they're just good people you know you, you have a couple out there that are not super great all the time but they yeah. come around like uh the, the guy who's the black ranger from operation overdrive there's a story like he stole a uh, uh, uh he stole a or he misplaced a uh a poster with all the signatures on it for a sick kid or something like that Oh, and, wow. Yeah, it was something crazy. Like, he got blacklisted. <laughs> oh, wow. While from all the conventions and everything, and he just, like, he supposedly misplaced it. Some people say he stole it. I don't have all the information, so I'm not going to make any judgments right. on anyone because wow. I misplaced things, too. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, I know. Yeah, but he came around and apologized for it. And some, like, a couple of years later, he apologized and was oh, like, wow. it was an honest mistake. And things happen, man. Like, I'm not well, gonna be like, I know oh, when I. Blah, blah, blah. I know when I went to, uh, yeah, uh, so I went to the Cedar Park convention and I actually made, met Austin St. John. And uh, he was really cool for these people that were ex-military and, uh, like, teachers. He was always giving out free, like, when I was standing in line, he was giving out free pitches, free signatures to military and people that deal with, like, the teaching system, the educational yeah. system. I've heard some really cool things from Austin St. John. That dude is apparently super nice to his fans and everyone. Oh, um, very, very. David Yost was part of the don't hate thing. Because he's an openly gay actor. Right. And apparently right. had some really bad issues with the Saban era when he was, you know, the Blue Ranger up till when he was Billy. And, uh, and Zio, he had to left when Zio... But apparently, right. yeah, he had some issues with that. But, yeah, he's a super nice guy. Same thing with uh, Walter Jones, the the Black Ranger. Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy plays yeah, that. He's, he's super nice to everyone. From what I heard, too, yeah, he's really cool. And then uh, Amy Jo Johnson, who's, um, I don't know, I actually know how many stories about her, but I guess assume she's actually a fairly decent person. Oh, wow. <laughs> most people come off of Power Rangers with freaking chill people. And they, they love the series, and, you know, they, they have a lot of fun doing it. And the guy who played Andros, he's, a uh, he's, uh, he, he's just like, whatever, man, it's all fun. He, he's a character, man. Like, I saw an interview with him the other night, and he was just, I don't want to say it, but he was just saying some really raunchy stuff about, oh, yeah. Some, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, don't get me man. wrong, he, he's joking and all, but god dang, who said, yeah. <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, the only the only one I know that's not super great off the like off the bat is uh Steve Car Carvinas, the Rocky. Oh, Steve Carvinas, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like he's alright, just it's hard to get in touch with him. And then like when he goes to cons and stuff, he's kinda always trying to sell merch and stuff. That's all oh, I know yeah. really. Well besides that though, like I'm pretty sure he's just a decent guy just trying to make a buck. Like, yeah, they got other ones that are trying to make a buck. They gotta make a likeness off their name. Some money off yeah. the likeness, and you know. Like, yeah, yeah, like, I, I'm not mad about it. I'm like, all right, cool, man, do your thing, but, you know, tone it out a little bit. <laughs> Please. <laughs> just, just, just a tad. Like, I know you're a Rocky, but no one liked Rocky. Right, oh, man, yeah. Burn. So, so um, and then, um, uh, Adam, uh, what's his name? The guy played Adam. Uh, I can't Bosch, remember. He got in the anime, he, he was a huge voice actor for anime for, like, ten years. Oh yeah, he yeah, was, he was a long player. time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what, what, what's another like? Uh, speaking of them, the, like the characters and stuff. Uh, now, when we were kids, I guess like we we bought the toys. We got the toys of them, right? A few, um, yeah. Yeah, but we got a few. Yeah. Uh, now, now that like basically Hasbro bought the rights to the whole Power Rangers line and name, um, the 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 Lightning Collection, of course, has come out, and uh, like to me personally, it's rekindled like the whole toy line uh, from when we were kids till now. Like, I guess like the the 
how they make them and the designs of them and the actual the head sculpts now. Into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, you know, Dino Thunder White. Uh, oh helmet, man, terrible <laughs> helmet. What, what happened with that? Oh, yeah, and they still they still selling restocks of those things with the mess of helmets. <laughs> yeah, I think getting yeah. Well, oh well. But uh, yeah, no lightning collection, man. Like that, that, that hit home. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's really cool. They they put so much love and care into the into the series, like for the collection. And it's not every day that a toy company will go through and actually put that much essential detail into toys. Right. And don't be wrong, Hasbro is good about that. Like, look at their Transformer lines. Uh, look at the Transformer Metal lines. Oh, that. Is oh, yeah. Cool. Like those things are solid. Yeah, and, and still, still metal. to this. Still to this day, I'm cursing you, man, because you got me into that, and mm-hmm. then I'm sitting here now looking at two shelves full of them and thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> hey, 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 at least don't buy the comics. The comics, they come out every other week. Oh, yeah, that's true. I only, bought the hol- yeah, I only bought the hollows because they were cool, and I was like, hey, why not, right? Right? Oh, those hollow helmet ones are really, yeah. really cool looking. But, uh, yeah, no, the Lightning Collection, I was just so happy they started that. So I remember uh, they made an announcement right after they bought the license from Saban about oh, yeah. doing a Wave 1. They were just kind of testing the water to see where it was. And they yeah. they made an announcement of the Lightning Collection for Tommy, uh, the White Ranger. And they're like, okay, we're going to do the White Ranger, and we'll do a couple other ones for Wave 1, but they're going to kind of be a surprise. Yes, yes, that's right. And then they came out with a, a White Ranger... Dino Charge Red, SPD, Shadow Ranger, which I think that's still one of the coolest Rangers ever. And he's played... So the guy who plays his voice is uh, the Mystic Knight Ranger. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's it's right. him. And he's the Mystic, uh, Mystic Knight guy, and he plays his voice. And that dude is just... Oh, gotta get that dude props. <laughs> he <laughs> does work. And... <laughs> Uh, and then uh, Lord Zed was Wave 1, and then they, they made a surprise announcement during Comic-Con that year for the Jason Dragon Dagger, or Dragon Shield Jason with a uh, two-pack. Yes, that's Jason right. Jason with Dra- uh, Dragon Shield and Zero Ranger 6. That's yes, a, and Zero Ranger 6. it was the first um, Lightning Collection double-pack, too, that actually mm-hmm. retailed for $30, but... Uh, inflation of not being able to get a hold of those has skyrocketed that way up, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yep, uh, man. It's inflation, right? But yeah, yeah and, no, I, that was, oh, I really wanted that one so bad. <laughs> so I got the well, rest it, of them and was like, yeah, no. In, in your opinion, like, what was your favorite wave, though, from, like, one till nine? One till nine? Um, well, that's a tough one. Real tough one. Um, you know what? I think Wave Seven, uh, Wave Eight was pretty cool because it had Adam, uh, the Green Ranger Adam in it. Yeah, the Green. And That's then, right. Um, I thoroughly okay. So I'm I'm a, I'm a weirdo. I like Blaze, like his costume. Uh, oh yeah, as the bat, like evil Red Ranger from uh, Beast Morphers. Yeah, he so was. Wave Four. That's yeah, such a cool costume. The helmet has the the digital thing in the eye. That was oh, such yeah. amazing attention to detail. Oh man! That. Props all day long to the person who did that head sculpt, <laughs> the helmet sculpt. Oh, props yeah. all day I, long. For me, I think for me, I always I like Wave Nine. It's something different, you know. And and actually, I always like the black uh, in Space Ranger. Fair enough. And it, and then, you know powers? after. Yeah. And then, you know, after reading um, the comics, you know, uh, Soul of the Dragon specifically, uh, I just had to. I had to make, I had to buy a spare SPD green and a spare dragon shield to, to make that and pose it on my desk here. Oh, a little uh, JJ? Oh. Yeah, I had to do a JJ. Yeah. And then, no. then I, I was like, if I, if I have a JJ, you got to have a JJ. And I was like, I will spend money out of my pocket. To get yeah. you a change. <laughs> you sent me, you sent me a SPD green and a, a, a uh, the armored Warriors black original armored black. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and I, I set them up on my uh, my shelf. I set them up on my shelf. <laughs> me day. too. I, I have a I desk full of these things. I don't have a spare dragon deck any of them. So I was like, well, oh man. man. 
but it looks yeah. really cool. Like, my whole collection looks pretty cool, and I, I, I gotta give it to you, the one who went hunting them all down. Like, I, I work too much, and oh and yeah, like, well, I'm hunting these things down for you. I'm like, well, okay then. Yeah, uh, what, what I tell you, I was like, uh, you're like, oh, I don't need another uh, Wild Force Red or in uh, Lost Galaxy Red. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, I was like, like, I don't need the Lost Galaxy Red. I have the two pack. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, no, sure. And then you melt it to me the next day. I'm yeah, like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, I was like, if I'm getting one, you're getting one, buddy. <laughs> to be fair, we, we're both right now at a point in our lives where we can spend a little money on toys and be okay with it. Yeah, I yeah. actually spend a lot more on toys than anything. <laughs> Shush. Shush. You have a car payment con now. Oh, almost yeah, done, actually. Thank God, mm-hmm. almost done. Good to see you, man. I but think my yeah. favorite, the favorite thing I sent you was the uh, Jason 2 pack on Surprise. I, uh, boy, <laughs> that was hard oh, yeah, to not yeah, tell yeah. you. Yeah, you, you got some extra money and you were like, well, you know what? I'm going to get this for you a Surprise. I'm like, yeah. Huh? Yeah. I, just, I was at work and you just like text me, you rat bastard. <laughs> you rat bastard. And you, I was, I was just sitting at work. I was like laughing so hard. I was like, damn, that was the hardest two days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there, and I got delivery, knocking the door. I'm like, okay, cool. Walked outside, see a box on the ground. I'm like, all right. I'm like, I didn't order anything. I'm like, hey, honey, did you order anything? And they're like, no. I'm like, well, okay. So I opened it. It was the two back. I was like, hold on my phone. I'm like, you red bastard. <laughs> like, I, I, I could totally, you. totally see you whispering that into the camera too. You rat bastard. <laughs> you rat bastard. <laughs> but yeah, oh, like terrible. That, I, Not, I, I think that was the coolest thing you've ever done for me because those are, ex- like, when you bought them, they were semi-expensive, and yeah. they were getting up there, and you, you, you picked them up for me, like, you picked them, you picked that one up for me, and I was just, like, floored because I never thought I was going to get my hands on that one. It was just Comic-Con exclusive, and every time I have the money to buy one, something else comes up, and, like, right. you know, we had to fix you had to fix the truck, or... Electric bill's a little higher than normal or something crazy. And I'm like, well, I can't spend that extra money right now because, well, i got to pay something else off or <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. That always comes up. My life. That's it. That's why I had to stop doing the pre-orders because I'm like, damn, all these pre-orders are hitting me. And, like, they're just sitting there. And so I'm, oh, I can't do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's, oh, man. The one pre-order I really, really want right now is uh, the, the Red Sentry. Oh yes, yes. You know, uh, you 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 got to the comics, right? Or at least most of uh, the standard grid, right? Uh, not not yet. I'm still trying to work those in. Well, the coinless world is uh, where the red century's from, and that is Skull. Oh yeah, I know. I've heard yeah. that Skull was the century. Yeah, he he was a century, and he was working. He was working down Draken's side. Uh, as a uh, as a spy, and he was he was helping the coinless, and it was really cool because you know you see Bulk and Skull in the series, and you know they're kind of jerks, but they, yeah. they come around in the season six. They come around as some good human beings, and they, you know, protect the Rangers at all costs. But man, uh, with the world of the coinless, like they never got that character development. You know, the six seasons of character development through multiple years, they, they it ended with the transfer of power from a. Uh, uh, Jason, well, they were trying to give Jason the White Ranger power, but, you know, Dracula took oh, that, so that was took pretty it. early yeah. into the series, and so they didn't get that character development we saw, and they got that, you know, they, they were forced to work in the not work, they were forced to survive in the world of the coinless, and it was just like, well, Skull still became a Ranger, or, or a Sentry, and right. still did everything else to help the Rangers, and I'm like, dang it, that's some character continuity. <laughs> Now, what was the series that, that was called, though? Just, like, Coinless? Oh, uh, so that was part of the uh, the Boom uh, the Boom Comic Studios. Uh, Boom Studio Comics. And okay. That was, I'll have to, yeah, I'll have that to keep that in mind the, to, 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 yeah. to read that myself. It's really good. I highly recommend it to anyone who's interested in Power Rangers. Oh, wow. It's a great... Uh, it's part of Lord Dragon's original storyline, so it's part of, I want to say, Year 2. I want to say, because year one oh, okay. is when you first meet Tommy. Year two is when Tommy's coming off the of being the evil Green Ranger and start to become the good Green Ranger. And right. that's actually a really good storyline, too, because you get to, you know, okay, so in the show, we got a little bit of Tommy having second thoughts about 
not second thoughts, but like Rita still having some influence on him just a little bit. Right. And the comics, it's a lot more intense. Like it's very because you know the comics deal with stuff in between the show. Yeah, and yeah. You get I've... to see Tommy suffer a lot yeah. for his decisions or the mind control and what he went along with, and it's just nuts. And Dragon yeah. is a Tommy who went back. That's what Tom. Like, that's what Dragon. That's who Lord Dragon is. Is a Tommy. That's who it. Went back to go work for like who didn't want to become a good guy. Right. And yeah. I, li- I like the comics because the comics just basically expand on uh, alternate alternate universes, I guess. Uh, not really alternate universes, but the actual just timeline itself. The oh yeah, yeah, the timeline. The yeah. Series and it, it, it explores the story, and that's the biggest part. Is it gives you more backstory for the Rangers, like it, it like uh, the current arc right now. They're going into Zordon's backstory, and I'm not going to tell you anything about that because it's pretty good. And oh wow! Okay. Read it yet. I and, haven't read uh, that one. When you okay. read it, we'll, we'll do another podcast, and we'll talk about that. They go into the Morphing Masters. They go into the Omega Rangers. Oh, the Omega oh, Rangers. Yeah, That's, yes. The, those, those suits are so cool looking. Oh, yeah. They're so cool. And then, like, the Shattered Grid, uh, the Morphing Masters themselves, the alternate universe, the coinless universe, the uh, Morphing Gridless universe, or the Solaris it, universe now. Interesting. That story. Yeah, that's a good story. Yeah. Um, that's that's where they find the, some interesting information about the Zeo crystals. And oh that. wow! And uh, well, so damn! There, well, it, you're gonna it, give it, me something excited to look forward to for reading yeah. wise. Yeah, like all all the Boom Studio comic stuff is fantastic. And I, if you if you like the Shattered Grid series, I'm gonna highlight or that whole saga. The guy who did that actually started his own comic called uh, Radiant Black. It's on at this oh. point in time. There's six issues. And it's good. Oh, it's I've it's good. Heard of that, but I haven't. I I just don't have a lot of time to sit down and actually read anything. Fair enough. Yeah, getting time to yeah. sit down to, to read stuff. It, it it takes time finding that sometimes. I even have problems with that because you know all I do my, my job is you know a little bit more intensive now than it used to be. Right. So yeah. I, I'm getting less and less time, but I'm still trying to find. I, I'm still making time. You gotta make time if you wanna if you wanna explore the nerdum and stuff. You gotta make time. For yeah, it. that's yeah. the sad part. Most of the time, I I do anything like that. It's whenever I'm running like a big job, I'll just sit there and post up like some YouTube videos explaining in depth or like some of the comics, or I'll actually yeah. just listen to them. Like you know? uh, there's a there's that one the comic story and he did a great Power Ranger art for that one. He did a lot oh, wow. of stuff for Power Rangers. I I yeah. listened to a little bit of the the Sixth Ranger. He he kind of like. Yeah. He's pretty good. He, he jumped in there. Yeah, he, he did his own thing, and uh, I've been enjoying his stuff too. I listen to him here and there. Uh, yeah, but most yeah. stuff he goes over stuff I I've already you know picked that. <laughs> so it's just oh, reconfirming wow. information I already have. So it's like, oh cool, yeah. man, I already know these things. Awesome. But yeah, he I, is I'll doing a good job explaining the stuff. To new people coming in. To the yeah. Series, especially people coming in from the Lightning Collection because oh don't know definitely. And yeah. That's a lot of information to go through. Like that's a. Power Rangers, Power Rangers has yeah. a huge backstory and a lot of information to go through, and I'm really happy that you know you got some, like we got a channel like the the Six Ranger and then um, the Black Nerd, Black Nerd. Right? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, that reminds. Me. I need to go follow him Andrew, because Andrew I. The Black Nerd, yeah. yeah, I need to go follow him because he's been pretty. He's pretty cool. I I haven't listened to him in forever. Black Nerd Comedy. That's who it is. Black Nerd Comedy. Okay. And it's Andre, uh, Andre Black Nerd Comedy, and he's really good. He's really into Power Rangers. He was actually on set uh, for the the 2017 Power Rangers movie. He got to go on set for one of the days they were shooting. And oh, wow. He doing a whole thing about that. It was really cool because he was talking about the suits and everything, and uh, the 2017 movie suits look stupid in the trailers. <laughs> they looked terrible the trailers <laughs> and all the all the toys that came out for it they look terrible but in the movie in the movie they were so cool oh man oh wow the zords are cool the suits are cool the, I liked that movie it was really good because it was a character driven movie well we've uh wow I just looked at the deal and we've exceeded our time we could probably wrap this up and save a lot of this for a, an episode two with with you. Um, we are speaking to Jim again, my younger brother. Do you have anything to say? Um, 
Not a whole lot. Just, you know, uh, I run the headset radio, and we're the guys who are doing all the editing and everything else for Zeody Hero. We have our own we have our own site, we have our own stuff, we, we have other clients as well. Uh, so if you want to hit up our website at headsetradio.com and check out other stuff, you can. We we have some really cool people coming through and we have cool projects coming along every other week. And yeah, give us a shot, give us a look and see if we find anything else interesting. Besides that though, uh, I really hope that you enjoyed, you know, me yammering about <laughs> me yammering on about stupid things. Not really stupid things. It's our nerd culture and what we remember as kids growing up. I uh, hope everyone has a great rest of the week. Whenever you're hearing this, I hope you have a great weekend. All right. Well, thanks again for being on tonight. This late, actually. Uh, now, the all y'all out there, if you like what you hear, you can always contact us at uh, zerotohero.com. Our uh, socials on there so you can get a hold of us email facebook twitter instagram and uh, like my brother said you can also reach out to him at headsetradio.com and uh actually you can hear some of the other stuff that he's working on as well there all right uh and if you like what you hear you can definitely subscribe to our podcast and and you can also subscribe to our my new uh, blog coming on as uh, we I call it the Morphing Grid Memoirs. And uh, like, share, and follow 